morning, good morning, good morning, and praise the Lord, it is that time again, amen. We have made it to see another day, and the Lord has blessed us uh, to come to his house and worship again and uh, experience God on this level and on this day. I would that uh, you would prepare yourself uh, on this fine day to uh, learn, share, study, and um, get into the word of God as the Lord as the Lord takes us on higher heights, deeper depths into his word. It is our, it is our purpose uh, to share a gospel that you could learn from. Uh, as we are a, a people that are yet striving to get to uh, the destinations that God has so blessed us to get to, I, I love the fact that uh, as we are striving to get there, we are finding ourselves in the stories in the Bible. It, it, in order for you to help yourself to uh, grow, I encourage you to, when you read the scriptures, allow the scripture to teach you about where you are and allow the scripture to apply to how it is you're dealing with something similar to those that are uh, written in the text. And, and by that example, the Bible says that these were written for your example. Mm -hmm. so, so since the scripture is written for an example, there are certain things that I don't have to experience. But also, there are also times when I am low, I can reach into the history of the, of the text, I can reach into the history of the activity of God, and that will allow me uh, to be encouraged in a space where I can't see no hope, I can't see a way out, but I can find hope and a way out written in the word of God. So today I am grateful that we get a chance to be that kind of church that's not always about hype. I do believe that uh, the excitement of church is a wonderful thing. I know that praise can be a stimulus, praise the Lord. Uh, but I think what, what stimulates or what, what sustains that stimulus is when you know what you're praising about yeah, yeah. rather than you praising just because everyone else is. Let me give you an example. I've been in, I've been in spaces where uh, I went to a football game and they were trying to get the wave started. You ever been there? You ever been there and everybody jump up in their seat, throw their hands up, and uh, you know you 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 trying you trying looking around to see. Say, well, <laughs> let me see if I don't if I don't wave with the rest of them. Then, then I'm going to miss out on the whole game. But see, the thing about it is that there are times when, watch this, the wave will come through and you'll miss your turn because you're watching the game, right? And so, so watch this. So it doesn't mean that I don't want to wave with, with y'all, but I'm really enjoying this play. That's why when the wave would come through, normally it's during a timeout or something. So the fans get a chance to entertain themselves, right? So, <laughs> so keep themselves encouraged. And here's, here's the thing about, I wonder what the wave looks like in the church. Well, because oftentimes when we see another person praising God, really? it then stimulates us to praise God. Now that's, hard, that's, a, that's, that's good and bad at the same time. Now watch this. My neighbor can praise him for what he did for my neighbor. But if I don't have a reason to praise God myself, I'm going to miss the wave. Well, come, mm -hmm. come back. Let me get you. See, where, where, where I'm going with it is this. It's oftentimes in church where the environment is going up and mm -hmm. you're not necessarily up. And the question is, why am I not as happy as my neighbor? Yeah. And so then I, mm -hmm. I raised the question, I think about three or four months ago, maybe, about the things we bring to church. Well, because yeah. if, if we're that happy and it's that hot in the church and it's all that praise going on and you're sitting there and you just, just necessarily can't get off the pew, maybe there is something going on with you yeah. that, that oh, doesn't mean... It doesn't mean that something is wrong. It just means something's going on. Mm. I said something. Doesn't mean something's wrong. Don't mean you did something wrong. It just means you got life is happening for you. And when life happens, watch this, we have a tendency to step back. Mm -hmm. We have a tendency to try to understand. We have a tendency to focus. What are we focusing on? What's going on? We're focusing on what happened. We're focusing on what was said. We're focusing on focusing on how it was said. We're focusing on, listen, uh, they insulted me. They lied. We're, we're fo and, and, and watch this. All of these things rob you from the moment. Mm, mm, 
of enjoying the wave. You, <laughs> you missed the wave. You missed the wave. Watch this, because they did it to you. And, and watch this. And I want to share on this fine day, if the Lord has allowed you to live through times like these, yeah. you don't want to be the person that's going to miss the way. Amen. Oh, I'm telling you, every, every chance you get, you yeah. all, every chance, you sometimes you're just sitting at home and practice. practice. <laughs> throwing your hands up, throwing your hands up. Listen, we were, at the, we were at the game the other day, and the band was playing so good. When the wave came, I missed the wave because I was concentrating <laughs> on, on, on the band. The band was doing good. And then, you know, and, and then you had some folk, and watch this, you had some folk that wanted to keep doing it. And all the while, I'm, I'm just non-compliant. I'm just not, because I'm focused <laughs> on something else. And here's the deal. There, there are times in your life where you will be so centered on what you have going on. You really can't get into other things because of where your focus is. And today, mm -hmm. my good church, we're going to have a conversation up in this room today. Yes, All right. Yes, so so before we before I go any further, I'd like to bring in my co-host that has uh, another good, a good, uh, you know, I'm going to have to get me some more glass, Mother Purdy. You're making it hard on me. All right. Yes, you are. <laughs> okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mother, Mother how, are, how are things, how are things on your side of town? They're good. They're good. Uh, over here in Raleigh, we're, we're doing well. I haven't heard of any uh, uh, folks cutting up over here. No, no disturbances. Been, but I haven't, they haven't told me about it. Okay. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good, Mother. That's good. Well, we're going to go right on into the word this morning. I want to... Uh, I want to invite you to this space. I, again, of course, you know, I always take a few minutes or so uh, to encourage and exalt the people uh, because, you know, we normally have people signing in and kind of getting their coffee and getting themselves settled during that first couple of minutes or so. Uh, but but before we start this morning, I see Missionary Bird Scott on uh, this morning. So, uh, Mother, I'm going to call on you to pray for us. Since it's Women's Month, we just need, to, need the women of God to be really on, on point this morning. She's smiling and ready to go. Mother Bird, good morning to you. And can you offer a word of prayer and bless our service this morning? Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Pray Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just come to you with gratitude in our heart, oh God. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord God, for the words of exhortation that have already gone forth, oh God, that were already must have been in my morning prayer this morning. But God, we want to be focused on you. We want to be focused on the joy that you bring. So God, we want to miss the opportunity to praise you, oh God. So Lord, that we won't miss the opportunity to give you the glory that you are so worthy of. Yeah, yeah. So Father, we ask you, Lord, to be in our midst as we know that you are. We thank you. God, for the word that is going to come forth. We thank you for this great teaching, oh Lord, yes. that has enhanced our lives, oh God, that has given us even more to apply to our lives, oh Lord, that we may walk this walk to your glory, oh God. In the name of Jesus, bless us. Bless those that are on now. Bless mm -hmm. those that are making their way on, Lord. Bless all those, God, that need this word this morning, that our mm -hmm. hearts will be open and receptive to it in the name of Jesus. And we pray and we give you thanks, God. We thank give you glory. Lord. We give you honor. We magnify the holy name, God. We bless you this morning, oh God, and we love you, God, because you loved us first. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Mother. All right. Oh, well, you know, the wave, the wave is coming. The wave is coming. I, I, I can see now that you're going to mess around. And uh, as the psalmist says, you're going to make me want to holler and throw up both my hands. Oh, my as, as, we, as we get through this particular, uh, as we get, get through this particular phase this morning, I want to tell you first and foremost that I'm on one already. I just want to, I want to give it to you already before we start. So, so it, just in case if someone thinks that, well, you know, it seems as if he's in high gear already, just know that it was something that I read. Well, all right. So in order for me, I don't want to just be the only one happy by myself. I think I want to share with you what uh, what I have learned uh, so far. So let's, let's let's take a look at the uh, let's take a look at this uh, lesson here that the Lord has put on our hearts to share. And um, I'm going to again, we're going to continue our uh, study on anxiety. And I want you to um, I want you to be very much prepared uh, for this ride this morning. I, I will tell you that uh, no, it's, it doesn't have a lot of twists and turns. Um, 
as we as you would as you would suspect but i guarantee you when you when you finish with this one here today you're going to go back and look at this text some more okay yeah. uh so so we're talking about again we're talking about anxiety and anxiety has a way of uh pushing us to dig deeper into uh, some things as it relates to the life that we're experiencing or the stuff that we're going through. So it deals with who, it deals with what, it deals with when, it deals with where, it deals with why, of course, the five W's. It also deals deeper with how, which is a divine question. I have many that call and ask the question, Pastor, I believe God's going to do something, but I just, I'm, I'm struggling with what God's going to do because I just don't know how God's going to do it. And, yeah. and because you're stuck in that divine equation, it, it, it causes a struggle in your spirit. Because if you don't know how he's going to do it, it's not that you don't believe that he's going to do it. You're just wrestling with the belief of him doing it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me say it again. It's not that you don't believe that he's going to do it. You're just struggling with the belief that I can't believe that I'm dealing with what I'm dealing with. And I can't believe that I, I just don't know. I don't know how he going to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And, I, and I'm going to tell you something. You, if you haven't dealt with this, just keep living. As, as though as, as mother them used to say, just keep living. You'll get to the point that you're dealing with some stuff and you just don't know how God's going to do it. I believe I got a couple of y'all on right now that are asking that how question. You understand what I'm saying? God, I, I need to get to financial peace. How? I, I, God, I need to finish school. How? God, I need peace in my house. How? God, I need I need to get healed. God, how? 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 God, I need help. How? What does help look like? Lord have mercy. So how is a good question, isn't it? Yes, indeed it is. But also uh, we deal with how long. <laughs> because how long <laughs> almost makes you want to go back to, to the altar and you almost want to just turn it back in. Okay. Okay. Well, this, this is not, this is not for everybody, but let me talk about some of y'all. Some of us have come to a place that we're dealing with so much and we've been in it so long that we are dealing with how long, mm -hmm. Lord, how long do I have to deal with this and how long do I have to wait? And also watch this. We, we also feel like in our hearts, we, not, we might not want to say it outright, but we feel in our hearts, if it take this long, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to just wait on you. I'm going to wait and see. I'm going to wait and see if I can get a couple of honest saints in the room today. If, you, if it doesn't, if it doesn't, you know, don't we say, if it, I tell you what, if it don't come by this week, I'm just, I'm just through. I'm just, I'm just sick of it. I ain't going to even be excited about it no more because I, I've been waiting too long to get it. And watch this church. I've learned that when it comes down to big things, big things don't happen fast, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. I just want to tell you that how long will work on you. Well, yes, it will. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you, it'll make you want to holler and throw up both. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Both of your hands. I, I believe we're going to start the wave early today. All right. So, yes, so, so church, get your Bibles, if you will, and turn to Nehemiah chapter number 10. I'm yes. sorry, chapter number four. Nehemiah chapter number four and verses 10 through 20 will be our lesson text. Nehemiah chapter number four, verses 10 through 20. Last week, we were dealing with verses one through nine. We did. This week, we're going to deal with verses 10 through 20. And uh, when I tell you that these, tech, these these scriptures are so loaded that I have to just take them segments at a time because it's too much material to try to cover in one setting. Okay? So just for the sake of our hearing today, we're going to invite our, our mother to the table. Praise the Lord. Mother Lee, if you could read the text for us uh, from the King James Version, I have on the screen the NIV, but we want to hear what the text has to say. King James. King James. King James. And the Judah said, the strength of the barriers of the burden is decayed, and there is much rubbish, so that we are not able mm -hmm. to build the wall. Mm -hmm. And our adversary said, they shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them and slay them and called the work to cease. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt in the, dwelt by them came, they said unto, no, they said unto us 10 times, 
from all the places which they return unto us, they will be upon you. Mm. Therefore, shall I in the lower, of lower places behind the wall and on the higher places, I even set the people after the families, mm -hmm. which were the swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers Don't and to the afraid. rest of the people, be not ye afraid mm. of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, for your sons, and your daughters, and your wives, and your houses. And it came to pass, when our enemy heard that it was known unto us that the Lord had brought their counsel to note, that we return all of us to the wall, everyone unto his work. And it came to pass that the fourth, that the time forth, that the half of the servant wrought in the work, and the other half of them held both the spears, <laughs> the shield, and the bows, and the harbingers, and the rulers were behind all of the houses of Judah. They which build on the wall, and they which bear burdens, and those that laden, every one with one of his hand wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. Mm -hmm. 18, for the builders, every one had a sword girdled by his side, and so build. And he that sound the trumpet was by me. And I said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, the work is great and large mm. and we are separate upon the wall, one far from another. 20, in what place therefore ye hear the sound of the trumpet, resort ye thither, unto me, our God shall fight for us <laughs> in the reading. <laughs> all right, all right, God so. Do okay. Well, thank you, yes, I'm gonna yes. give you a hand. Thank, thank you, mother, I appreciate it. Thank you for me. <laughs> <laughs> that all, all God, we, God is going to fight for us. I don't know how you knew that that was gonna be something that I'm gonna talk about later. I, uh, but you didn't mess around and read yourself happy already. So, so if you understand why I'm already um, excited about throwing up both my hands, it's because of the close of verse number twenty. It said, "When you, whenever you, wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there. Whenever you hear the sound, join us there. Our God will fight for us." <clears throat> All right, so. Church, we're going again. Uh, we always have to do just a little bit of a re review because you never know who's joining with us and we don't want to uh, leave people behind, okay? So, of course, we're talking about anxiety. What is anxiety? Of course, it is a mental health disorder characterized by feelings um, <clears throat> of worry uh, or fear that is strong enough to interfere uh, with one's daily activities. Yes, okay. Yes. All right. That's what anxiety is. All right. So of course, uh, these last couple of times I've been giving you not only, uh, uh, the text, but I've also been giving you somewhat of an offshoot of, of the text. And so I'll build on that statement by adding this caption or not, not adding to it, but dealing with our text today. The text is, is that when it is that you have anxiety brought on by fatigue, when you experience anxiety brought on by fatigue, and when you, um, a lot of times people, many of us in the body of Christ uh, don't know that we are not at our best when we're tired. Anxiety will make you tired. Anxiety will make you tired, but I'm talking about anxiety when you're tired. 
There's a big, there's a difference in the two. What you're asking about is, you know, will anxiety make you tired? Yes, because you'll be worried, 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 and you won't rest, 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 and therefore you're going to wake up tired. But I'm talking about, as the text says, this task is great and large, mm -hmm. and they're working as best as possible mm -hmm. to get it done. Watch this. And, and the Bible, and, and verse, well, I believe it's verse number 10, talks about their strength. What did it say? Is decayed. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still in the text. So, so their strength is decayed. And so, when your strength is decayed, Mother Lee, that means that that means that your strength is not at a hundred percent. You know, right. the battery is low. And there's rubbish. Mm -hmm. much rubbish. Yeah, there's much rubbish. So, so, so then, how they're feeling is also affecting their sight. I really need to get off this slide, but you're gonna make me work before I have to go. But let me let me let me give some more explaining. See, when you when you are feeling a particular way, you'll see some things that that will cause you to be discouraged based upon what you see. Because they are out of strength when they look at the wall instead of them seeing potential, they're now seeing the rubbish. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How many times have you tried to do, um, how many times have you uh, um, uh, tried to do something with school and then you go into the, uh, you go into the registrar's office and they print out your transcript and you see, oh my God, thank you, Jesus. I have completed uh, 12 courses. Then you learn, you know, 12 courses equates to 36 hours or 38 hours, depending upon, you know, the courses that you took. And then here comes the funny part. Then it, then you look at the amount of hours you need to finish your degree. Then you almost want to say, you know what, <laughs> I ain't uh, done nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> make me want to throw up my, oh, lift up both my hands. Yes, make me want to holler. And throw up both my hands because yes. what, you you at first you were encouraged by what you saw, but then you were devastated by how long it looks like it's going to take mm -hmm. to finish what you started. Mm -hmm. So again, um, when so when you when you see that what they felt affected what they see, then it came right back and then affected how they felt. Again, I want to talk about anxiety brought on by fatigue. So let me qualify that for a second, please, and, and share that fatigue is the feeling of tiredness, okay? Fatigue is the feeling of tiredness. And, um, you know, I think that when we talk about it, we must understand that tiredness is something that is subtle and it's also something that's gradual. I, I, have, I have learned that, you know, sudden, sudden tiredness is one thing, but when you wake up tired, I just want, you know, I'm just going to slow down. I'm just going to slow down and <laughs> I'm just going to slow down and tease the text for a minute. Have you ever, have you ever woke up in the morning tired? And you call yourself, well, you know, tonight I'm going to get, I'm going to knock out good eight, eight to 10 hours. And then you, you, you knock out eight to 10 hours and you still, yeah, wake tired. Up and, and you're tired. Mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you this: How how tired of you are, are uh, about wearing masks in quarantine? You ain't got to say nothing. I'm gonna just keep working until y'all get until y'all get talkative. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? We've been in quarantine for more for greater than twelve months. I see a lot of the anniversary posts coming up now of what happened when we posted that. You know, it's gonna be the last time we're gonna be in church for a minute. You you see what I'm saying? Why? Because you know, we don't know when this thing going to be over with. And, and watch this, because we don't know when the, the coronavirus, the quarantine and all this stuff is going to be over, it is we have a sense of anxiety that's brought on by the tiredness of still being in something we thought would be over with in a couple months. Mm -hmm. Didn't we all think it was like the flu? We was like, oh, Jesus, I'd be glad when flu season is over with. Hopefully, 45 is going to tell the truth one time. You know right. I hope he's telling the truth that when, when the flu season is up, this is going to be up. Maybe a month afterward. You understand? And in the midst of it, it, it flu season went by, and we were still looking and saying, Lord Jesus, where well, he was wrong again. You know, We were hoping he was right. right. You understand what I'm saying? Because watch this. Uh, and I'm telling you, church, this has changed everything about life. Mm -hmm. 
You can act like, you know, that this season has not been an eye opener and an eye awakening for us, but I have become absolutely more aware of what to do with my time because of situations like these, Mm -hmm. that I'm not necessarily just wasting time now. No, I'm redeeming time. You understand what I'm saying? And watch this. And not only am I redeeming time, but I'm also aware that there are times when I'm tired. Yeah. And, and I think the funny part about church people is that we have not understood how we can get tired. Mother Bird did a teaching um, uh, some years ago on, on uh, Sabbath and uh, how, how important Sabbath is. And mm-hmm. we, we talk about on the seventh day, God rested. Yeah, but, but, yeah. What, but what day do you take off? Mm. Right. Lord, I could take this sermon a whole nother route. You understand what I'm saying? We, we can take this teaching a whole nother level. But yeah, you, you know people that don't take t- time off. Uh-huh. I mean, don't take a day off. And, and you understand it? And watch this. They don't take time off. And, and then um, they, they work, 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 and they don't know how to play. Sometimes, church, you got to take you one and live. Mm-hmm. Can I, can I say Amen. it again? Sometimes you gotta. Sometimes you, sometimes you gotta take one and not make you want to holler <laughs> and throw up both your hands. Sometimes you gotta know how to uh, take take a day off. Watch this. Sometimes you gotta know how to take a step back, especially when you're working on a project that you can't figure out. Right. Oh, God, let me encourage you. If you're working on a project that you can't figure out, maybe you need to step away from it for a minute and don't touch it. Amen. Spend some time in thought. Right. And then come back to it. And then when you come back to it, I guarantee you, guess what you're going to do? You're going to see another chapter. <laughs> That's why that book ain't finished. <laughs> She's like, Lord, Lord, wait a minute. I got to go back. I got to go back. I got to go back and do some more edits. And before you Ooh, know it, <laughs> I can throw up my hands at my feet. <laughs> before you know it, you, you know, that book then turned into two, if not three. Now you got a series. Now you're Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, you, you yes, sir. <laughs> uh, and, but but why is it because because watch this when you take a step back you you also taking a step back can help you see imperfections that you may have to correct Ooh, absolutely isn't that good watch this yes. what if the lord <laughs> has you catch something because he slowed it down yes yeah and if he if god had not slowed it down you would have made a mistake and that would have yes. cost you even more later Yes. So, 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 so church, sometimes things going slower is not necessarily a bad thing. Mm. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? When God slows a thing down, that's when we need to become aware and focus on God. Where? Let me, let me, let me talk. Let me talk. Let me talk. So, so tiredness is, is something that happens to uh, believers. And, and listen, I wanted to talk about this because I think that many in the church don't understand that we, um, we, we don't understand that even the saints get tired. Yes, Lord. Yeah. I don't think we understand that. I don't think we understand that we get to a point that, you know what, Mm-mm, I can't, I can't, you know, I need, I need to just, I need to just step back. You, you understand what I'm saying? And, and watch this. Based upon, I, I knew, I, I, I pastored a church. Let me just feel, let me just feel the audience right now. But I pastored a church that was just tired of night service. I'm going to see if they don't respond, we're going to go back. <laughs> but, but I, I pastored a church that used to go to church. They, they would go to church on Sunday morning have an evening service over there at Reverend So-and-So's church, and then come back to our own church at, 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 in the evening time for night service. Oh. And, and, and watch this. It, we did not pay attention to how bad that was affecting the body. Uh, I paid attention to it because while it was that I was coming over there to visit with them, the first question they asked is, if you become our pastor, will we have nice service? <laughs> I thought I was getting interviewed. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> and I told them, I said, well, ain't no sense of me coming at night. Y'all ain't coming. Ain't no sense of me coming by myself. <laughs> so <laughs> it's one thing for us to have. What, listen, I, I am not opposed. If the Lord's going to meet us at night, he's going to meet us at night. I'm not opposed of a night service. But let me tell you something. Some of the times that we have not paid attention that, that some of the times where we are spending 
our time running back and forth to the church. We're not spending time running back and forth to our families. Right. Oh, I said something. Part of the tiredness that you're experiencing is because the burden that is placed on the whole family. While you out there being super and super saved, you have you have put a stress and a strain on the goals. And watch this. Sometimes the the um, moments where you could really develop your family, you, but instead you can't develop your family because you're still trying to develop your name in the church. Mm. <laughs> Oh, 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 let me, let me help you. Let me help you. If God called you to be something, it's going to happen. Right. You don't have to be, you don't have to be there with them folks all the time. That's right. If you're, because if God called you, it shall come to you. You're entitled to it. It's in your name. Can't nobody take it from you. But, but we think that, well, you know, I need to go over here and support this and support that. And guess what? And then watch this. Then you're tired. Now your worship is not sharp. Mm -hmm. Now, now you really can't focus on your sermon. You can't focus on what you're supposed to be teaching. You can't focus on the things you're supposed to be doing. And guess what else? You can't even focus on your family. Amen. Because you out, you're out there, you, you out there being extra. Pastor, you know, and, and, and as we talk about Nehemiah, Nehemiah was not a prophet. Nehemiah was not a preacher. Nehemiah was an administrator and mm -hmm. he and look and he still got a book in the Bible, mm -hmm. you know, and he didn't have to, and, and, and some of that stuff that we think that we have to do to be great for God, God doesn't need everybody to be a preacher. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need everybody to be a prophet. He mm -hmm. needs some folks who are getting there and work, do the work, mm -hmm. see what needs to be done. He needs some administrators, he needs some workers. Mm -hmm. Well, well, see, look, look at, look at, the, look. See, do you understand how his role? See, see, see. People don't understand the importance of administration. Without administration, things go awry. You need right. people in every position. Right. Yes. But administration is critical. Yes. Yes. And and watch this. It, I have seen organizations that don't value administration, and I've mm -hmm. also seen them decline mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they they don't have things together. You know, but we have a mother Lee that keeps yeah. good records. <laughs> she keeps, oh, she keeps good records. She keeps things together. Now watch this. If but without without good records, you'd be all over the place when it's time for yeah. you to to go forward, right? And so and so watch this. How many how many um, how many times we've had we've had we have members that have worked in in organizations. Uh, mother Bird was a. Uh, financial secretary for a school, right? And, and and how can you balance a budget without receipts? Right. I have I have heard. Have you ever? You know. Now I've been in I've been in leadership for quite some time, but I've been in meetings where people were offended when they were told to bring a receipt from a transaction. Yeah. Right. You know what you mean a receipt? Well, we need a receipt to kind of account for what it is. And we we said we wrote a check for this amount. Where's the receipt? Right. And so because they thought you were being facetious. They thought you were being disrespectful. And, and what you mean? I mean <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. But see, that's all that's all part of watch this. That's also part of putting the people on your team in position for excellence. Because if right. if they can't do their job excellently, then guess what? Somebody's gonna fall short. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, leaders, it's our fault. Because if we don't do what we're supposed to do, it's because one person's decline is going to affect the whole team. Ooh. Then let me give it to you another way. A little leaven leaveneth the whole loaf. You understand what I'm saying? It only takes one little bitty part right there for you to not know what you're doing and not respect the process to affect the whole outcome. Mm hmm let me let me move on a little bit further. Seems as if y'all, you know, they didn't turn the TV off already. So so watch this now. <laughs> it is normal. It is a normal phenomenon. Um, tiredness and fatigue is a normal phenomenon. And, and, and watch this. It is when you have a lot of physical or mental activity, but it resolves completely. See that? With rest. Mm. Mm. You can overcome fatigue if you slow down. Well. God, if I had, if I was in church, I'd tell you to look at some, look at somebody on your row and tell them sit down somewhere. You, you will help yourself to, to focus. You will help yourself to be better at what you do if you just sit down. Or if, if I were in the country, I'd use the term sot. Yeah, you sat down. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you know, I, I know y'all. I, I ain't, you know, I, I don't want to do it. I'm not gonna do it. Well, where did we get it from? We're gonna keep on going. Okay, so so so. Um, I want to ask the question again. Are you tired? Are you tired? Is this you? You know, this was this was something that I sent to my classmates. Um, have you ever been in a class and the teachers up there talking, and this is you sitting there? You you know you got you got your paper out. You ready? You ready? You ready for this class? And you can't even concentrate on the lesson because you're trying to shake off that sleep. This <laughs> that is constant. It's in your eye too. I'm talking about you have done everything you can to, to shake that off. And, and listen, and while you while you're still fighting it off, you're saying, I'm gonna get a hundred on this test. Well, no, <laughs> what are you gonna get on that sleep exam you're working on right now? You're doing the sleep right. study. That's what you're doing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing a sleep study. I I I um, I, this is some. This is this. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you. This is sometimes people at church. Amen. Church yeah. is such a relaxing place. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> and you can sit down and do nothing. Mm -hmm. And it's quiet. Mm -hmm. And you're listening to the one that's up. Mm -hmm. But it just rocks you right on the sleep because. You might not pay rest at home. See, mother, I'm gonna tell you why I have, have a problem no with that. Because most of the time, it's I'm so, the one that's up there talking. It's so, so, it's so peaceful. <clears throat> mm -mm, it's mm -mm. so peaceful. Not when you sitting there and you're trying to shake off the sleep. Now you, you, you know, you you, you might well go get you some covers if you're gonna do it like that. You, you understand? <laughs> you really got a problem with you. You understand? But but listen, I think I think I think that. You won't be obedient. Come to church. Then when you get there, you can't you can't even reference the message because, because you slept the whole time. And then when the preacher is right. in celebration mode, you want to stand up and shout. See, I'm almost wanting to cut the mic off and take mm, sit down. You 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 can't be that happy. You can't throw a book, you can't holler and throw both your hands because you didn't slept through the whole the whole message. So um uh, let me, you know. Let me let me let me let me stop messing with y'all. Let me let me start teaching this text. So first of all, church, let me let me, let me show you something. I am I am definitely uh, of the mindset that we are as a people sometimes unprepared, uh, right. which is which increases our anxiety, and we also don't have a contingency plan. Mm. That when things happen, we don't have we don't have a backup. We don't know what we're gonna do if if this happens. Uh, what you're going to do. And if that happens, what you're going to do. And so what happens is, is that when things are thrown at you, when there's a, when there's a wrench uh, out there, something goes wrong or awry, it throws all, it messes up your whole, your whole uh, uh, peace of mind. And so that, that entails where we sit in the text today. Okay. <laughs> while, while we're wrestling in this text, we're, we're wrestling with the fact that you have a group of people that are tired they are, uh, the, the Bible says their strength is decayed. And um, then, you know, eventually it's going to be a wall, but at the moment it's rubbish. Mm. Mm. But it's going to be a wall though. But it's rubbish right now. Have you ever looked at a, a construction project um, from its start? Mm -hmm. You can't see what it's going to end up to be. But while when it starts though, oh my God, it looked like a pile of trash, doesn't it? It ain't it ain't nothing but dirt, you know, or or it's this or it's that. It definitely does not look like it's ending. But but your sight in the beginning is is something, uh, and it does something to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Construction, some construction, and then building thing. They have a picture of what it's going to look like. Indeed, mm -hmm. that is to keep the encouragement, especially if they're working with other people. Mm -hmm. And you're here now, you don't see nothing but rubbing, but you can just keep on working because so I'm working toward what I see. But see, mother, there's that, and that's that's good. But but here where we have a problem in the text, the text does not talk about the picture no. that they see in the end. It talks about the rich, but it also talks about the rebels. 
See, the rebel in the text is the people that were against the Jews. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so yeah, and, 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 and all of them with them. Because mm -hmm. it, it wasn't just three people. If it had just been three people, they wouldn't have had a problem at all. Mm -hmm. Right? But evidently, it was an army against them. Mm -hmm. And because it was an army against them, watch this, it is a different it's a different animal when you're fighting something and you're outnumbered and overpowered. Because they've been intimidated or timid by what had happened to them. Yes. Great, great question. And this is where we get into the history of the scriptures. Okay. The devil uses intimidation on the saints more than any other tool or weapon. You have to know mm -hmm. that God has given us the power to overcome intimidation. Okay. But in order for us to overcome intimidation, we got to know the word of God. Because the word of God gives us every bit of a uh, uh, of assistance. It, the word of God gives us nuggets of scripture to help support. When the enemy comes up in the form of intimidation, God will give a word to his people. Yeah. And so oftentimes where we miss out church is that we we uh, see intimidation. We're already our strength is already decayed. Mm -hmm. We see the army appearing mm -hmm. and then we're ready to tuck tail and run. That's not yeah. that is not what the scripture says. The scripture says that watch this, that that Nehemiah, the administrator, Nehemiah, the man of the hour, the moment of, of, of God in the text was when Nehemiah would see the effect of all the stuff that was going on and would turn right around and give a word to the people to help them remain encouraged. Right. This lesson today is to help you to remain encouraged, right? I did not come to discourage you, to talk about you or make you feel bad. I came to encourage you. So, so, so hear me clearly when I tell you that the men did, what did they do to help themselves overcome fatigue? They organized. Mm -hmm. Okay. Their strength is decayed. Mm. You know, we got, we got to work on, we got to work on the text. Their strength is decayed, right? Mm -hmm. They're tired. Mm -hmm. They're tired. And then last week I told y'all about them baby steps. I told you that they were having some incremental, uh, they, they're making baby steps. And because they're making baby steps, not only are they tired, but it seems as if the steps are not meaning to me what they need to me. So, 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 so their work is not at a hundred percent. In other words, what they, what they're doing is, um, it's moving forward, but it's not necessarily, um, it does you, we don't see a whole lot of progress. So, so let me, let me, let me, let me do some work here with what, what we're seeing right now. Um, you have, when you have incremental success, what you, you you know the experiences of, of incremental success is I've moved just a little bit further, but the matter to complete is huge. It's incredible. So 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 let me let me let me back up for a minute before I go too fast and deal right there. If 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 we've made some baby steps, but then I'm looking at it and seeing incomplete, outweighing my baby steps, right? Yes, it gets it gets into that 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 song there. Thank you, Sister Sarah, where it says it. The truth is, I'm tired, Ooh, right? Yeah. My options are few, right? You, you understand what I'm saying? So 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 the matter the matter is is that I've made some success. Yes, I have, but but what I'm trying to do is still not done. Oh, I need to talk to a couple of y'all that got some things that are not done. And because it's not done, I know it's working on you mentally. I, I know it's doing something to you spiritually because it's not done. But I want to, first of all, give you an, op an option to take a look at the hand of God. Mm -hmm. Look at God rebuilding in a devastated place. Yes. Yeah. God rebuilding in your single life. God is building in your unemployed life. God is building in your overweight life, in your overwhelmed life, in your troubled marriage life. God is building in a dysfunctional family. He specializes, watch this church, in putting things back together. God Almighty. The, 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 the old, the, that, old, that old story, uh, uh, said it at one time, Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty, Humpty had a great fall and all of 
the king's men could not put Humpty back together again. How many of us has that been? That we've had a great fall and nobody could help us put the pieces together. And when we woke up and realized that we were single, we woke up and realized we were unemployed. When we became aware that we came from dysfunction, we didn't know how we were going to do it, but we have a God that specializes in putting things back mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. so, so on one hand, I got to look at a God that, that doesn't need anything to work with to still get work done. I said, yeah. I just said something. Yeah. He works yeah. out of something called ex nihilo, out of nothing. So yeah. since God has nothing to start with, but is going to have something when he finishes with it, that means, church, that all we need to do is just be a blank canvas. Oh, and when God finishes with the picture, it's going to look just like what we imagined. But oh my God, some of us are caught up in the fact that that we're, we're in so much devastation. We don't know what God is going to do, but I come to bear witness that God specializes well, in things well, that are impossible. Yeah. If you ever had a mountain you couldn't well, climb, you ever had a sickness that couldn't be cured, I dare you to lean on God. We're, well, still, on the, yeah. we're still on the third point. Let me move forward. Watch this now. On the other hand, watch this. I need you to take a look at yourself. Because after looking at God, I need you to look at you. And understand that you uh, uh, are a chosen, you have been chosen as a conduit and a catalyst for the continuation of the cause of God. Mm -hmm. See, when God decided to put you in position, when God decided to put you in this circumstance, he knew you were broken. Well. Well. Mm -hmm. He knew you were battered. He knew you were bruised. He knew you didn't have it together. He knew you were smoked out. He knew we had issues. God Almighty, it, see, it, 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 just wait a minute. I'll come and get you. He knew you had a gambling problem. He knew, Lord have mercy, that you stole. He knew that at one point mm -hmm. you used to, mm -hmm. you, you, you drunk some stuff you shouldn't drink. You you did some things you should not have done. He, he knew about, oh God, I wish I had a couple of y'all that would wake up this morning and realize that God knew. God knew more about your past than you want to tell. God knew more about your stuff than you want to admit. But even though he knew what he knew, he still decided to keep his hand. Oh, God. He decided to keep his hand on you in spite of what he knew about you. I told you, it makes me want to holler. <laughs> and throw up both my hands. Since, since I got an honest church that knows that we have come from a long distance, think about the distance we come from, and then I get to a place called tired. I'm working on something. Watch this now. I'm working on something, and while I'm working on what God told me to do, God is working on me. Well, well. Have you ever been there <laughs> that you're working on something, <laughs> doing, trying to do something for God, trying to do what you believe that God has called you to do? And while you're doing the thing that God has called you to do, he's working on you. Well, preacher, what you mean he's working on me? Because my past keeps trying to become my present. Well, well. That every time I start taking steps forward, my past show up and accuse me of what I used to do. Oh, God, time I start doing the thing that God told me to do, my past comes and instigates something to try to pull me back into where I was. I thought that the Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. And here comes my past trying to allow those old things to become my new. But the scripture says that old things are passed away. But, but here's the deal. Sometimes, church, watch this. Your past has a way of trying its best to rewrite your future. Yeah. Oh, I was watching a segment this morning of someone that talked about an incident that occurred years prior to them becoming famous. Mm -hmm. And folks always have a way of trying to dig up your stuff after you've moved beyond a particular place. And, and the person yeah. said, he, he said, he said, listen, he said, I'm not worried about what happened back then because back then I wasn't who I am today. Oh if you want to dig up something, dig up what I've dig up what I've done since I've started this work. Oh, yeah. let me do some work here. Yeah. See, see, God. God was not using the people that was going against him. No, he picked he picked a group of people that was going to stay steadfast on him. Mm, mm, See, yes, 
The, the, the Jews fell. Yes, the Jews, watch this, ended up in the position that they were in. But when God decided to move forward, he picked up a brand new people. All right, all right. I want to talk to the brand new saints on this call right now that ha that that have that uh, agree that yeah, preacher, I've made I've missed I've made some some wrong steps. I've done some wrong things, but thanks be unto God, He has given me an opportunity to become new. Yes, oh, right. look at somebody in your house and say, I, I look new. You understand? I, I look yeah. different than I used to look. I don't I don't look like the old the old me. You understand what I'm saying? No, I'm gonna need you to not still be here. I'm gonna need you to I'm gonna need you to be new. Yes, indeed. So listen, I need you to look new. And if yeah. you if you look new to yourself, you'll act new. Let me tell you, it's just like let me let me pick on you a little bit and, and offer a little pettiness. When you had those new clothes for school. You had a different pep in your step when you walked down the hall, didn't you? Yo, I'm telling you, you, you knew you were sharp. Couldn't nobody tell you nothing because your mama bought you that outfit you always wanted. The first day of school went too fast <laughs> <laughs> because you got on something new. Yes, God. You listen. You didn't came. You didn't came home. You didn't even want to take your clothes off. You wanted to go outside and play in your new clothes because you know you were sharp. <laughs> and all of this is because you put on something new. Mm. I just want to ask today if I can get you to put on something new. Yes, Lord. If, if you can right. put on a new mind, if you can put on a new attitude, watch this. Take off the grave clothes, Lazarus, wow. and, and, and put. let me put something on you so you can look a little different. Oh, God, if you would let your past go and put on the potential that God yeah. is putting on, if you would just let go that, yeah, you used to be a person that did nothing but argue, fuss, cuss, and do all those things and put on a new attitude that now you're trying to collaborate, work together and go forward. If you would just put it on, Lord Jesus, I guarantee you, it'll make you want to holler. Well, well. And throw, up. nope. Yeah, no, nope. we're going to calm down, mother. No, nope. yeah, no, we're not. We're going to talk this lesson out. Yeah, I'm not going to let I'm not going to let her do it. I'm not going to let her do it to me. Y'all 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 pray for me. <laughs> so watch this now. Yeah. Here's the thing that I want to teach you. <laughs> Organization is the defense to ensure you get rest. Oh, y'all missed it. I, I, if you don't write that one down, I'm telling you. Organization is the defense to ensure you get rest. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason why you don't have no rest is because you're not organized. Yes, right. Oh, I'm gonna just let that. I'm gonna slow cook this one. Oh, oh, oh I'm gonna I'm slow. I'm gonna slow cook this one. Watch this now. If you're not organized, if, if uh oh, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, too many explanation points. If you if you if you're not organized now, watch this. <laughs> If you're not organized and things are a mess, it yeah. is going to be absolutely difficult for you to try to get things together because where what you look like, watch this, is how you're feeling. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, see, I messed around and saw something on TV called Hoarders. Mm -hmm. You ever you ever saw that? You ever saw that show? When you walked in, when you looked and saw, watch this, you look, you look at people, you look at people at their house and say, ain't no way in the world somebody stay in the house. They got all that stuff. <laughs> right. But, but watch this. Have you ever noticed that they have a clinical person with them going in that house? Because the, cl the clinical person is saying to them, the disorganization is also internal. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So because you're not organized inside, right. now you're not organized. What's on the inside? Oh, working on that. Oh, 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 so wait, wait, watch this, watch this, church. Watch this. So so if you really want to get you some rest, mm. I dare you to I, I dare you to organize. Mm. In other words, get your stuff together. That's right, that's right. Oh, I'm gonna need you to not be getting it together. Because you know how folk, oh, you know, I'm getting it together. No, I'm gonna need you to already have it together. Yeah, because because this the the, the issue is this the, the issue is this y'all see see church if you always getting it together you gonna miss your turn 
Mm. But if you got it together, when your turn comes, see, 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 I'm the type that's going to dream that my turn is actually coming. Mm. So when it comes, not only am I going to have it together, but I'm going to have some things in place. Mm -hmm. Let me, let me pause here and just drop something out there and help you out. See, see, while, while, while our good brother, number 46 has dropped this, this money in your account. I'm going to need you to have vision for stimulus. Yes. Uh huh. See, see, if you don't have vision for stimulus, you just, you're going to go shopping. Come on, come on. Right. And then after you finish having a good time, watch this. After you finish having a good time, here we go. Now you don't have no. Now you don't have no money. <laughs> right. But you sure had a good time today. Oh yes, I did. Preacher, I enjoyed myself. Great. Now what are you going to do now? Nothing. And then you're going to go back and ask the Lord about. Watch this, Lord. What are we going to do? And then somehow or another, you're going to read that scripture in Matthew 25 about being faithful over a few things. Right. That, that when it is that you didn't make no investment, you, 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 yeah, you got a big seed because you got a big family. And then now it is that watch this, what you're doing with that big seed though, is it, is it going to, is it going to benefit you beyond this month? Well, right. I know you're riding good now. I know you, I know you're doing good. Cause you know what I'm saying? You got the bag, you secured the bag because of brother Joe, he didn't drop, he didn't put some money in your account. But let me ask you a question. <laughs> Have you stimulated your future? Future, though mm -hmm. because listen did you notice that that all the tvs on sale now oh god i'm telling you now that that walmart is running a special on 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 55 inches and in, in, in above because walmart wants some of that stimulus yes indeed sam's wants some of your stimulus mm -hmm. yes god L listen watch this the mall wants some of your stimulus then, then your favorite restaurant then sent you a coupon and an invite. <laughs> they didn't send you a coupon and an invite. You know, come on, bring your family down. We're going to let your kids eat free. They already know your kids are grown at this point. You understand? Right. <laughs> is, they needed you to come because, you, because we have not paid attention, church, to how we are not, because we're not organized financially, we're not necessarily prepared for the future that we keep praying for. Well, well. Oh, oh I, I didn't, I didn't come in the back door on you now because see, you, you keep telling God when I pay this credit card off, He just gave you the money to do it. Uh -uh. Right. But you, but you saying, well, I'm gonna make a couple of extra payments. No, that's not what you told the Lord. You told the Lord when I get the money, I'm gonna pay it off. And now that you got the money, what you gonna do? Hmm. Right. Mm. And, and so and so then church here's here's what happens then later on when you get into a tight it wouldn't be that tight if you would have done what you said All right. right if you watch it if you would have stayed with the plan this is why organization will give you rest see see when they organize church when they organize they got together they wouldn't get that together they, they already had it together yeah. so your yeah. ability to keep things together will enable you to fight off fatigue mm. you got to keep things together listen listen i've been working on this thing trying to keep trying to get this get this weight off and they said listen don't you just diet for a season this has to be the way your life is going to be forever yeah if not know. you're going to lose all this weight and then yeah. next thing you know you're going to be fat again <laughs> i just have to be direct with that term you understand because sometimes we don't get it until you until you you call me absolutely if you don't if you don't get it if you don't keep it together you're going to lose later on are you hearing what I'm saying? Can I can I say it again? If you, if we don't keep it together, we're going to lose later on. So here's what I'm saying. You didn't mess around and got all that. You didn't got all fine and stuff. You didn't, you didn't then you got some faith. And I'm going to get rid of all of these fat clothes too. And then you turn around and you keep everything away. And then the moment you see that cake again, Jesus Christ, that cake was calling your name. You didn't went to bed. You understand? And that cake then woke you up in the middle of the night and called you to the kitchen. You didn't went in there. You didn't went in the microwave and warmed it up. Got you some ice cream and you didn't sat down there and oh make you want to holler <laughs> and then watch this and instead of you learning how to yeah see you didn't went from a cheap meal to a cheap week <laughs> and you're cheating and you're cheating and guess who you know who you're cheating you're cheating yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then after you finish cheating yourself the little progress you saw has now become rubbish Mm. Mm. 
But this is why, no, church, got we got to keep going. I'm telling you now, see, I, I talk about cake and cookies because I know my problem. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And I just so happen to have a wife to make all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but I tell you this, the Lord don't, you know, my sense of smell, you know, Corona's good to tell you that you can't <laughs> smell nothing. Because half the time I can't smell that strawberry cake. This is, but, you know, when I walk past it, sometimes it'll tap me on the shoulder. <laughs> turn me all the way around, too. <laughs> you understand? Pick me up. Turn me around and <laughs> place my feet, Lord Jesus, oh, in, the kitchen, God. In, in the kitchen and tell her I need a piece of that cake. Yeah, but listen, now, now in the midst of it, watch this. In the midst of it, I also learned that it's not it's not quite healthy. <laughs> to, see, see what I'm talking about? See what I'm talking about? So I can't get cake now. She's gonna buy me some yogurt. Ain't that a mess? Pray right. for me over here. <laughs> Are you gonna cook a cake and then buy me some yogurt? See, you see, you see how that becomes a problem. You, you, you know, it'd be different if, you, you know, if she was making vegetables and then gave me an alternative like yogurt. But no, she going to cook a cake and then tell me to go, you know, here, here's some yogurt and some granola. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me move on because, you know, y'all, I'm, I'm tired. You see, you see why I can talk about tiredness? I'm tired. Okay. <laughs> oh, Petty, <laughs> pray for me. Pray for me. So Nehemiah 4 and 15 says this, uh, and it came to pass... Uh, when our enemies heard that it was known unto us and God had brought their counsel to naught, that we returned to all of us uh, to the wall and everyone unto the work of his hand. Okay, so, so watch this. The Lord, the Lord, what, what did God do? He frustrated their plan. Mm -hmm. The Lord frustrated the enemy's plan. The enemy just knew that he was going to get us because of, he flexed that muscle. He knew that we were tired because the devil knows when to get you. Mm. The devil's not going to tempt you. Watch this with something that's not a temptation. Mm. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? If, if, if my if my nemesis is Kate, he's not going to tempt me with Brussels sprouts. Well, You're right. <laughs> I'm not going to be tempted <laughs> with Brussels sprouts. You, you understand Absolutely. what I'm saying? But don't, don't let me go ride by Krispy Kreme mm. and the hot sign is on. <laughs> that's you know, that's the Bruce Bruce and me is gonna come out. You understand what I'm saying? And I almost put 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 away half a box uh in, in the parking lot because I don't want nobody to ask for none. You, you understand what I'm saying? So so all the while, see all the parents understand what I'm talking about. Because you don't even want to bring it home to your kids because you own some, you know, I don't even, even want to have to contend with that. So so because I don't want to contend with that, I'll just go and say, you know, if it was a long line in the store. <laughs> <laughs> Could that be a mental disorder? What? The hot sign? Ain't no yeah. mental disorder, sister. The hot sign is on. <laughs> that ain't no disorder. That is order. Krispy Kreme is from the Lord. Especially when the hot sign is on. But if you're a diabetic, <laughs> it's just not, it might not be your ministry. <clears throat> so so here's the deal. But but listen, so so when it is that, that we are trying our best to live right, eat right, and do everything the right way, the Lord has to frustrate the, the enemy's plan. So what does he do? You can't drive down that street. <laughs> or, right. or you can't go to the store. We'll let somebody else. We'll let somebody else go because we don't want you to be, you know what I'm saying, until you get strong enough. <laughs> it, but, oh, now, now, mother down. Here's, here's the deal about tiredness and weakness. It, you're exactly right. Everybody has one. So, so watch this. So, so the focus in the text shifted. Did you see it? See, see, they went from the threat of the enemy to the opportunity that the Lord made available. The first thing that they were concentrating on was the threat of the enemy, how the wall looked mm -hmm. and how far they'd gone. Mm -hmm. And then they shifted mm -hmm. because of Nehemiah's constant verbiage in their ear. Don't be afraid. Don't you worry about it. We, we can do it. They had that positive reinforcement in their ear. And then once they had that reinforcement in their ear, it shifted. Watch this. God will, he will frustrate the enemy's plan when we learn how to focus on God rather than the enemy. Oh, I said something. Oh, I, I, I got too many saints concentrating on what people said about them. You, you can't stop folk from talking about you. Keep working. <laughs> You can't stop people from lying on you. Keep working. Listen, you listen. Your ex, if your ex, and all of those folk are gonna talk. Your job is to keep going. 
You, you listen. You can't argue with people about what they said you did. You, you it, it, the most pettiest argument in the world is listening to folk that have split up from each other and they don't do nothing but talk about yesterday. All right. If you were so happy to leave, be gone. Amen. Why do you have to spend the rest of your life talking about you know where well, I was over there, but you know folks ain't right. Well, then be happy where you are. Amen. Seems like you just where you was. If you got to talk about it every time I come around, you, at some point we got to talk about your future, Amen. unless. Your past is your future. And if that's the case, mm. then make up and go back. Amen. And leave me alone. Amen. In, in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Watch this. So too often, uh, the activity, statements, and threats made to you throw us into a fog of frustration, which delays our progress. The activity, statements, and threats made to you. See, see, when you when you realize, church, that that Sam Ballard and Tobias they threw the grenade out there, and then the people began to uh, uh, show problem against them. Let me show you something. See, see, church, let me help you out. That that there are a lot of people that get real offended when they talk about uh, racism in America today. And they talk about, you know, preacher, the white folks is against us. Let me tell you something. They can be what they want to be. Mm -hmm. But if God be for us. Yeah, who uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, uh, who, who can be against me? If the Lord has assigned for success to be uh, uh, in my hands, then I cannot allow people that I'm going to be successful over. Uh-huh. Stop me from getting to the place where God has designed. See, where, where, are we, where are we messing up? Because we didn't mess around and let people uh, get in front of us. And you, you saying, well, you know, we'll preach it, you know, but these white folks, they in position. Yes, they are. But the word of the Lord is in position. Where? Where? And the word of the Lord, watch this now, the word of the Lord is going to go before you. If you just do what God said. Listen, God told you to go to school. Well, you know, these white folk trying to cut our opportunities off. And guess what? It's going to be some white person in the office that's going to have to sign your check. Yeah, you know, the Lord told you to go out there and try to get yourself together. And yeah, but you know, these white folks is this is doesn't. So let me tell you something. The biggest enemy we have is the critics that want to remain the same. But the text says that they had to get away from such criticism and they had to start building an opportunity for themselves. And the only way they did it was they shifted their focus. If I need to pause right there and just tell you, I need you to shift your focus. You have been concentrating on the wrong stuff for too long. You have been concentrating on people, enemies, what they say, what they do. Good God, stop concentrating on what folks are doing and get busy yourself. Shift your focus. Stop letting folk get in your head, get in your mind. Listen, you know how many people told me uh, uh, that the church wasn't going to make it and, and we wasn't going to last? And I, Watch this. People told me how many churches failed that started from scratch. <laughs> and I only thing I can talk about is what the Lord said. God said go. It wasn't Amen. Oliver said go. It was God that said go. And wherever the Lord says he must make provision because the moment he speaks it, provision is already there. Yes, Lord. Are you Lord. hearing what I'm saying? When the Lord tells you to do something, you might not be able to see it with your physical eyes, but through the lens of faith, you Ooh. will be able to see what God's about to do. So preacher, what is it in point number two that you're helping us to understand? And it is this, I'm teaching you that through the lens of fear, you will see nothing but the statements, the activities, and the threats of your enemies. Well. But through the eyes of faith, you will see the opportunity that the Lord has made available for you. Yes, yes, yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm loving this today. Watch this now. So, so the text teaches us the men were alert and aware of their adversary, but no longer anxious by their presence. Well, well. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Look at this. They were alert. Now, the text says that they were alert and they were aware. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and so when you become alert and aware, you know the enemy's there, mm -hmm. but you're still working. Well, God, if I could just teach y'all how to whistle. Where can you watch? <laughs> if I can just teach y'all how to whistle. Mm -hmm. Because while it is that you're trying your best, 
to uh, concentrate on what the devil's doing. Mm. Listen, if, if the devil can get you to move like that, then what will happen is you'll never do anything. Mm. You have to yeah. stop. You have to stop allowing other people to stop you from doing what you're trying to do. Mm. Amen. Listen, if you're if you're trying to do something and then every time you try to do it, you you allow the other person to stop you. You're giving someone else power over you. Amen. You know, well, you know, you know, every time you turn around, here here come here come the devil. No, listen, in spite of the devil, Jesus did what he did in spite of the opposition of the church. He knew they were against him. He knew that they were against him. He knew that they were talking about him. He, he could care less. But watch this. If they're talking about you, evidently you're doing something worthy of being talked about. That's true. Oh, oh hold on, hold on. Let, let's think about it for a minute. Now, now they didn't sat there and they didn't conjured up a whole group of people to hate you. Mm. But you know what that means? Mm. Evidently, you, you are so worthy of somebody else's attention. That, and you're doing so much that they got to make sure that you hear them talking about you. But you know what's fun? Give them something to talk about. Right. God, yeah. let, me, let, me, let, me, let me be prophetic in this room today. I need you to give the devil something to talk about. While, while it is that folks sitting up there hating on you and talking crazy about you, get them something to talk about. I love going to funerals now. I used to, I used to be nervous, mother, when I would go because I ain't want my family. You, you, know how the, you know how the folk that knew you by your nickname, knew you when you grew up and knew you when you didn't have nothing. And then when you get there now, they don't know how to talk to you. Mm. Is that Junior? <laughs> you, you understand? They don't know. They don't know what. They don't know what name to call you. Listen, and then you know now. Now that I've arrived a little bit, got a little, got a little letter or two behind my name, and people come up and say, "Hey, hey, Doc, they go, they go, William, man, that guy right there," and they looking and saying, "Him," <laughs> because watch this. They never valued what was in you because they didn't know what was in you. Right. Right. But while they were over there having meetings about what I was doing, I was still working. Mm, mm. Oh, let me pull up on you and tell you that I need you to keep working. Keep working. Listen, you got people telling you that you don't, you know, everybody ain't got to go to school. That's fine. That's you. I'm going to keep working. Mm -hmm. Oh, every, everybody don't have to do, you, you understand, the things you're doing. Did you ever have people tell you you're going the long way? Mm -hmm. Keep working. Watch this. While I'm going the long way, I'm building muscle for long term. Yeah. People that take shortcuts can't survive when the storm comes. Right. Yeah, because the moment the storm comes, they get too tired to sustain what's going on. But those that have the fatigue to handle, can I give you a comparison? The Bible says that when Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane, he was prepared, but the disciples were tired. Mm, mm, mm. Why were the disciples tired? Because every chance Jesus got, he went up into the mountain to pray, to prepare for where he was getting ready to go. Where, where was the disciples? On the ship, nervous and anxious and scared and, and worried about this and worried about that. And because they were so worried, they couldn't rest. Oh, and right. so when it came down time for the major test, they were too sleepy to pass the test. But Christ was prepared for the test because he prepared himself along the way. Yeah. He, every time, every chance he got, he was in prayer. And we read how Jesus had to steal away to pray because watch this. If he'd have kept, uh, if he'd have stayed with the disciples so much, he'd have been all focused because the disciples wasn't doing nothing, but constantly, you understand, constantly going through all that crazy. And church, this is why sometimes you got to cut your phone off. Where? Oh, this is a good place to touch your neighbor and say, Pastor said, cut your phone off. Sometimes when you're trying to do the thing that God told you to do, you can't talk to everybody. You, you can't, you can't even, yeah, I'm going I'm to have to put you on do not disturb because I got to get to where I'm going. And if I, and watch this, if I don't get to where I'm going, it's not because God didn't open the door. Sometimes it's because I have allowed the external things to affect my internal things. Well, well, well. Mm -hmm. So, so church, church, watch this. I, I, I'm going to give you a good one. Get, get ready now. Get ready. Watch this. Watch this. So, 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 so they use the tool in their hand for the task at hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So look at the screen there. So when they was ready, when it was time to fight, they had their sword. All right. Right. But, but on the other side, they also had their hard hat and their vest. All right. <laughs> 
and they were working. Watch this now. And see, this, this is where church, this is where you don't get it. you got to learn how to fight the task at hand. Mm -hmm. We often worry about the pending threat, but a pending threat is not today's threat, it's possibly tomorrow's threat. Well, but well. if you allow tomorrow to suspend your activity today, mm -hmm. not only are you not going to get anything done tomorrow, you're going to be too tired to fight the threat that's coming the next day. Okay. But if you use the tool you have in your hand mm -hmm. for the task at hand, mm -hmm. you will concentrate on the task at hand. And then when tomorrow, Jesus said, watch this, tomorrow is sufficient for itself. So that means that you need to focus on what's going on right here instead of you concentrating on, oh Lord, well, what's going to happen tomorrow? No, I'm going to do my best today because if I do my best today, it's going to set up a different looking tomorrow. Yes, sir. Yes, right. Sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Are, you, are you still here? Are you still here? I just want to know. I want to, I think I done lost a whole lot of them because yeah, <laughs> here's the deal. We have, we have allowed people to have us worried about a tomorrow and we miss today. Because folk call you and say, man, have you heard? Man, I can't, I can't concentrate on what I heard because I'm focusing on what the Lord told me to do today. Right, right. Mm-hmm. See, see, I, I can't worry about about yesterday. I can't, I can't worry about tomorrow. Sometimes, watch this, church. If I worry about tomorrow, I'm going to miss today. And if I miss today, then tomorrow's going to be worse because I missed today. And, and oh my God, how often do we miss out on opportunities concentrating on a tomorrow that has not yet appeared yet? But if we concentrate on what God has put in front of us right now, if you just focus on the task of what's going on right now, God knows when to open that door. And if you're, watch this, if you are focused, when the door opens, you'll see the door open. But if you're not focused when the door closes, you'll, you'll turn around and complain about not having opportunity. And then God will show you, I opened the door, but you were too busy trying to argue with things that are not even happening yet, that you have messed, your, you have messed around and put yourself in a position to miss opportunities. They had a sword for the devil and a hammer and shovel for that wall. Mm -hmm. And depending upon it, whether or not they came close enough, that hammer and shovel would have became a weapon. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, all right now. <laughs> you, know, you know, I come from that school. You understand? We'll fight. I'm going to fight you. Listen, let me tell you something, church. You got to fight with whatever you have to fight with. Yes, yes. And, and so while it is that you have you have people, uh, 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 you, you, have, you have opposition there, the enemy is trying to use your opposition to slow down the, the progress that you can have. Okay, and so and so as as I as I bring this to a uh, uh, conclusion today, I want you to understand that there's some there's some parts of this text that's that's taking me somewhere that I want to pass on to the church. And what I want to pass on to the church is this: Don't you allow the threat, the impending threat, to stop you from progressing towards your tomorrow? Sometimes the enemy knows that we have a scared bone in our body. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the enemy knows that if certain things take place, we're going to be, uh, instead of us being alert and aware, we're going to be anxious. Uh-huh. We're going to be anxious. And because we're anxious, we're going to allow anxiety to, to cause us to stop working. Because we're going to, anxiety, what is anxiety? It interacts with how we perform. And so since, since, since I see that my adversary, you understand, my adversary moving around, now I done got anxious about my adversary. Let me tell you something. Your adversary is moving to see how they can get you to move. Mm -mm. Right. If you knew how much control you had over your adversary, you'll keep working. That's why I'm trying to teach you to use the, use the tool in your hand for the task at hand. Right? Don't don't worry about what the adversary is doing. If the adversary come up and it's time to fight, you know when it's time to fight. <laughs> but but listen, when it's not time to fight, you keep working on that wall. Mm. Okay. And uh, so 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 watch this, Mother Lee. Now now Mother Lee got happy when she read this part. But the scripture says in Nehemiah chapter four and verse twenty, "Our God will fight for us." Now, now that was that was something for me, mother, because as I as I read it, I then began to think that that all of the texts, uh, all of the text was talking about what the Jews were doing. Mm 
And then you get to verse 20 to talk about what God's going to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. listen, listen, to, listen to what I said. The, the, the chapter was talking about what the Jews were doing. Mm -hmm. Then you get to verse 20 and then talk about what God's going to do. All right, all right. Nehemiah is telling them, fight for your children. Mm -hmm. Fight for your families. Fight for your homes. And then he gets to verse 20. And says that our God will fight for us. Mm -hmm. And this is where I slow the train down and, and get you to focus real clear on a word right there. That if God's going to fight for you, then evidently there's a future in this fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If, if, I, if, if I were close to you, I, that would be a great place to tell you to touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor that there's a future in this fight, that there is something about what you're fighting right now, that there is a future in it that you have it has not it has not realized just yes, yet. But oh my God, there's a future in it. But you, but how do I get to the future? I got to fight for. It. Yes, my God's gonna fight for me. But in order for God to fight for me, I got to show up for the fight. And when I get to the fight, I can't be worried because worry is not faith. So when I get to the fight, I just need to be alert and aware. And what am I aware of? That my God shall fight. <laughs> oh, 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 mother, let me let me show you something. Let me show you, let me show you something. If my God's gonna fight for me, then that, that means that the Jews shall fight even against foes superior in number. And, and watch this, they were also fighting something that was stronger than them. Uh -oh. That, that is so many stories in the Bible where Israel was outnumbered and overpowered. Yes. And so then I need to come and talk to you. If in fact you are overpowered and outnumbered mm -hmm. because you are alert and aware, you're aware that you can't whip this by yourself. Yeah. So you're going to need some help. Great. God wanted you to know that you can't do this by yourself. Right. So part of the part of the learning that we're experiencing right now is that is how we have to often keep our relationship with God intact because where we're going can never be realized without God. Right. Okay. Where we're going will never be achieved without God. And so God has to constantly uh, keep us in a place to show us that uh, the, everything that we're trying to do will only be achieved by the, our constant collaborative with God and man. We got to keep our side of the covenant. We got to keep talking to God, even though we're advancing a little bit. You know, that's that. why I need to slow down and really teach is where we get people, mother. Have you ever seen folk that uh, get a dollar above bus fare and stop coming to church? Yes. They didn't got stimulated. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> mm hmm mm hmm And you know what, Pastor? Yes, ma'am. I, I, I got a new Bible. <laughs> and it's, it's the chronological Bible. So it's not the one that it has it separated into chapters, chapters, and books and books. Mm -hmm. It has it all. It, so it shows you what's going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that we usually think about Malachi being the last book in the Old Testament. But it's not. But Malachi and Nehemiah, they were contemporaries. Mm -hmm. And so when, when I think about being stimulated, mm -hmm. don't forget, you need to bring your tithes into the <laughs> storehouse, okay? <laughs> and then you have that future that you can look forward to. That's that windows of heaven blessing mm -hmm. that the Lord will open up and pour into you. Mm -hmm. But don't get stimulated and spend it all at the wig store, at the Ooh. restaurant, at the this, at the that. Don't forget <laughs> you got a church. Don't forget that God has an expectation for you. Mm, mm, all mm. right? Don't forget that it's time to pay your time. <laughs> I might have to play my commercial again. That, you know, that commercial didn't went around Facebook so much. I think it messed around and got viral. So, so listen, so, so then... When, when we when we think about when we think about this um, when, when we think about this um, thing that's fighting us, when you talk about God fighting for you, it's when you get to the fight. I need you. To, I need to slow this text down and bring you to the fight. Because yes, I know that you're uh, you 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 you're tired. 
but are you in the fight? Right. I want to know where, where, where is your mind in this fight? Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. See, when we reach adversity, church, it's not time for us to give up. It is time for us to put on the mind of Christ. What would Jesus do in a low place like this? He would get up from the grave. He would remain in that low place. He would not stay down. He would get up from it. So so, so watch this. I need to be able to encourage a couple of you that have experienced some down moments. As, as, as a pastor, I have pastored people that went through divorce. And they've had folks to walk away from them, leave them with the children. And, and, the, and the woman wonder, oh, my God, what am I going to do? You're going to get up from it. Just like God Amen. raised Jesus from the dead, he's going to raise you from that state of divorce. And he's going to give you the strength to have a mentality to move forward. Well, yes, indeed. Yeah. So, 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 preacher, well, well, what happens? Well, oftentimes you get caught up in what people are talking about, thinking that I was wrong and I was this and I was that. And instead of you allowing God to minister to your heart and to your spirit, you let what's fighting you cause you you become full of what's fighting you. Mm -hmm. Instead of you getting full of what's fighting you, you got to learn how to get your foes up off you and yeah. understand that sometimes God allows certain things to happen for God to show you how strong he is. Mm -hmm. So yes, I went through this low place, but I'm coming out. Uh, and when I come out, watch this, it's going to make me hollow. Yeah. <laughs> and throw up both my hands, <laughs> that when I come out of it, listen, I've learned to be able to testify that there is life on the other side of this, that, yeah. that even though I was with this person and we had years of whatever we had, but watch this, now that that chapter is over, it's time to start a new chapter. Look at somebody and say, sometimes I got to start a new chapter. It's not necessarily all bad that I had a bad chapter and it's over. Sometimes starting a new chapter could be with who you were once with. Yeah. But if God did destines that that's not the case. When I start my new chapter, I know that it was good while it lasted, but in the words of Minister Smith, Ooh. peace out. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get to the other side because yeah. there's life all oh God on the other side. And the only way that I know that there's life on the other side is I got to live when I get to the other side. Ooh. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't need you to get to the other side and look back as if you left something. No, I'm going to need you to get to the other side and keep moving forward. Ooh. A new chapter means that that chapter is closed. Let me give you some scripture. The Bible says it this way, that I got to press toward the mark. But how do I press toward the mark? I got to forget those things which are behind. And I got to press forth unto those things which are before me. So, so watch this. Life is before you. But, but yesterday is nothing but a memory. Yes, indeed. And I can say peace out and I can be happy about the memories I have because I survived it. Uh oh, I just I just pulled on a place that's going to make me shout because I got some of y'all that, that that spent some seasons of depression because of how yesterday plagued your life. But because you survived what others did not survive, because, you know, other people have been through what you've been through and they are stressed out. They don't know how they're going to move forward. They don't know how they're going to make it. But with the penny you have God has messed around and gave you life with pennies when yeah. when you had dollars and you were in prison but with the pennies you got Lord Jesus it'll make you want to holler yes God and throw up both your hands and so so church watch this I've also learned that listen it's not always about money because when it is that you get out of something it's not necessarily because the money wasn't right but it just wasn't no peace there. Well. And sometimes a peace of mind is more valuable than a piece of change. Yes, it is. Yes, yes. yes wow. it is. Go somewhere else with it. But since we had church, I'm going to have to stay with it. Yeah. So, so, so. <laughs> yes, so sometimes a peace of mind is more important. Yes, indeed. Yes. Then, then, then a piece of something. Yeah. Then, then a piece of change. I'm just going to say change because change yes. will make you do something strange. So, but, but a peace of yes, mind, well. though is more important than, 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 than a piece of something. And so then, church, what I have to realize is, is that God is the orchestrator of my peace. Well. God put the opportunity for peace to be in place. Because watch this. When God put peace out there, he then said to me, I know you're frustrated. Ooh. I know you're tired. But I have 
uh, assign peace to your address. Mm. God, if I were to be prophetic, I would just tell you that I'm sending peace to your house. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sending peace to your sad. house. You, you've been stressed long enough. You've been tired long enough. You, you, you've been, you've been in trouble long enough. I'm sending peace to your house. Watch this. Y'all have been arguing enough. I'm sending yeah. peace to your house. You, you've been, you, you've been too mad about too much and and too much that means nothing. I'm sending. God said, I'm sending peace to your house. Let me, right. let, me, let me go on and close here. Watch this now. Exodus 15 and 3 is, is a story that teaches us that the history of God fighting for Israel is written right there. You don't have to go there. It's written in the text. The text says in, in Exodus 15 verses 3 through 6, the Lord is my strength and my defense. Yes. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will what? Praise him, my yes. father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior, and the Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots, listen to, listen to uh, Moses talk about it through song. Pharaoh's chariots and his army, uh, he has hurled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned mm. in the mm. Red Sea. This is the moment where Israel got a chance, the Jews got a chance to recall the history of God. Mm -hmm. And so the history of God, watch this now, the, the history of, of God was, 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 was there because Israel was at a place where they could not, they, they had moved forward just a little bit. But then here come yesterday coming up behind them. And yesterday coming up behind them is saying to them that you cannot go forward anymore. And what did they do? They panicked. But God is sending a word of peace. Yeah. The word of peace, he said to uh, the panic in Israel also got on Moses. Because the people were panicking. And so then the leadership began to panic. That's why the cool heads have to prevail. You understand what I'm saying? That sometimes you, you understand when you when you call me and and you it sound like life is going crazy for you. And my response is it's gonna be okay. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and you and you look at me, he's so insensitive. You, he, he, you understand what I'm saying? He, he's so insensitive. He you you see, I told him that life is going this way and life is going that way, and his response is it's gonna be okay. Why? Because I know it's going to be okay. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to be okay, but somehow or another, I know we're going to get through it. Well, right. Yeah. And so, so, so watch this. Moses didn't respond that way though. Moses went right to the Lord and said, God, listen, the folks is ready. You know, these folks going to kill me if you don't do something. And God <laughs> said to Moses, watch this. What do you have in your hand? Ooh, yes, sir. God, let me, let me hear up and get out of this. He said, what you got in your hand? In other words, you got something in your hand that will mobilize you through the mess you're in. Well, yeah. But you got to use what's in your hand rather than letting the mess you're in forget about what you got in your hand. I want to tell you, you already got the resources yeah. to get through this space right here. That's why I'm sending peace to your address. Ooh. That when you get peace of mind, you can focus on what you got in your hand rather than what the enemy's doing through the hands of others. And yeah. that's what God has sent in a sign in this season right now. Don't you allow the frustration that's going on in our country to frustrate the progress and potential that you have. You let God be your guide and show you that, watch this, that fatigue is not going to cap, it's not going to be your champion. Well, fatigue is not going to take over you. If anything, you're going to take over this. You're going to fight for what it is that God is making available. I dare you to fight for it. I dare you to fight like you're from North Memphis. I feel like hollering now. I dare you to <laughs> fight like you got some folk, amen, that's threatening your children, talked about your mama, played the dozen with you all night, and you ain't got no more comebacks. I dare you to fight. Listen, I'm telling you now, you'd have been too timid too long. I dare you to fight the thing that's fighting your mind. Fight the stuff that's fighting your spirit. Fight the thing that's pushing you from where God says you can go and fight for the place that God says you can have. I'm here yeah. to pronounce today, you can have it if you fight for it. You yeah. can yeah. receive it. You can achieve it if you fight for it. If you want yeah. peace in your house, fight for it. If you want a peace of mind, fight for it. If you, if you want, watch this, if you want more money, 
Fight for it. You got to fight for it. Stop asking God for stuff you ain't going to fight for. But get yourself in position and fight. God, I feel, I feel like hollering. All because I know that the same God that fought for Israel is the same God that's fighting for us. Mm -hmm. And so, church, here's, here's what I want to tell you. Uh, uh, you show up and the Lord will fight for you. That's, that's what I'm trying to tell you. All you got to do is show up because the battle is not mine. <laughs> the battle is the Lord's. So since the Lord got enemies, I inherited the enemies of the Lord the moment I got on the Lord's side. You inherited the enemies of the Lord the moment you begin to change destiny in the course of your family. This is this is why church I get real nervous. I start shaking when I get to this point. Yeah. Because I got a lot of first timers in my congregation. People that are first time degree people. Mm -hmm. You're the first person in your family to go to college and get a degree and you wonder why you're being fought. It's because for years the devil has trapped your family and the yeah. Lord has assigned you to break the curse. Oh, yeah, God, I feel it. Somebody in, on this call today is getting ready to break the curse. You have people in your family that never owned homes or didn't have this and didn't have that. And now God is positioning you to be the first in your family to ever do it. And I'm going to tell you, whenever God does a thing, he does it well. Yeah, and so since yeah. God is positioning you to not only be in a position of prominence, but to do it and do it well. You're going to go out in style. And this is why you cannot keep your head down. At some point, you got to lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. Why? Because I feel like hollering. And lifting up both my hands. Why? Because I, I, I did not know that what was fighting me was the blanket of the yesterday and the excuses of those folk that had opportunity and didn't take advantage of it. Yeah. And so while it is that I'm fighting, I'm fighting cousins that, that cannot see where we could be. Wow. I, I'm, I'm fighting uncles that are trapped in, in being okay with just being okay. I'm fighting folk that have settled for mediocrity. And in my spirit, I want to be around them, but I can't because we're thinking on two different wavelengths. So I have to just go to the dinner and keep my mouth shut. Why? Because I'm working on something. Wow. It is that y'all are sitting there talking about me, making jokes about me. Look at, look at, Oh, they think they're so smart. They think they're so much. But guess what? It's not what I think. It's actually what you think. Because you see what God is doing in me. You see where the Lord had me at one time. You see where I started from. But guess what? Guess where you see me now? You see me in my future. And it looked better than it did when I started. All because, watch this, I took God at his word. And I began to fight for the thing that God said was possible for me. And because I decided to fight, I didn't have to fight it myself. I had a God that showed up for me. Yeah. Listen here, church. I'm telling you that you got a God that's going to show up for you. You got a God that, listen, when, when, when the enemy, and the Bible says, when the devil raises against me, oh God, he said the Lord will lift up a standard against the devil. In other words, God will build a wall. When I, I'm trying to figure out how, how it is I'm going to be able to sustain these folk that's pushing against me, but God is pushing back against them. God, listen, yeah. God has a way of pushing down the walls of sexism. Well, God, yeah. let me calm down. God has a way of pushing down the wall of racism. When they said that black folk will never do, God has a way of pushing against it. Yeah. I'm a living witness that I, I, I'm i one that, listen, got license for stuff. And I, and I, and I heard folks say, they ain't going to never let black folk do it. But the devil is a lie. Yeah. If you would just try. That is the, the the second step to your success. What the first step the first step is for you to become aware of what God has done in your life and what God has deposited in your spirit. The second step is for you to try. Because I got a lot of you on this call that's aware. You got something that you can work with. You got something you can do. You got something that can make you a millionaire if you want to. But, but what's, what's holding you back is a try. You haven't tried to do it, but but then you didn't already talk yourself out of it before you try. But look at somebody in your house and say, you better try first. Before yeah. you quit, yeah. you better try. If you can't do it, you better know why you can't do it. And guess what? When you learn why you can't do it, try something else. Because if this one didn't work, I guarantee you, if you try something else, it will work. It's, it's almost like a person trying to get the recipe right. 
And, and you, you notice that mama had a way of making stuff and they never wrote down the measurements. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mama, how do you make that cake? I need a pinch of this. And a, dash of that. <laughs> and a dash of that. How do you measure that? Is that a teaspoon or a tablespoon? You understand? Well, just boy, just give me the spoon. Mm -mm, uh -uh. Then they say, watch this. Then they mess you up and say, you, you then taste that it's done. Yes, yes. Right. You, you, you cook it to the taste. That's yes. another one that messes you up because cooking it to the taste means that I got to keep adding stuff until it tastes right. It's right. right. <laughs> and, and so then, watch this. Now, how then do I get the recipe right? I got to keep trying. Ooh. Because if I show up, well. the Lord will show up. And guess what? He'll fight your battles. If, if you show up. Listen, I know I know that I'm messing with some of y'all now. Because listen, you, you didn't show up. But that's okay. That was yesterday. Ooh. Now I'm telling you to show up. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you to get your mind right. I'm telling you don't quit. I'm telling you don't throw in the towel. I'm telling you don't stop where you are. I'm telling you keep going because God will fight for you. Yes, he will. So church, watch this. Anxiety tries to take you out by showing you images to increase your fear. Ooh. This is what happens. This is what happened in the text. Ooh. They begin to see the rubbish. Ooh. They begin to see the enemy and anxiety begin to come and they were already tired. Yes. This is Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane. Mm. He was already tired. He saw he was missing a disciple. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he, he saw somebody was missing. Mm. And the Bible says, and Satan entered into Judas. Mm. Lord help me. Mm. He, he saw that somebody was missing. Mm. He, he, he saw, watch this now. He saw something in the cup. And he said that, listen, what's in this cup? I, I know I know. if it's your will, it shall be done. But, oh, if you can just give me another option. Right. Mm. He, he, he saw, guess what else he saw? That those that said that they will be with him were absent. Mm. Because the same disciples that went up there with him, instead of them praying with him for an hour, they were asleep. Because yeah. what happened? Fatigue. Oh, yes, God. And that's when we get the truth that the flesh is willing. I mean, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And so we got some weak folk on our team. And guess what, church? Sometimes the weak folk on your team is not necessarily uh, folk you can get rid of. You just learn where their ceiling is. Uh-oh, I, I just spoke something. If, if, if they're not strong enough to, to muscle through this point, you got to take on the, 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 the whole problem yourself. That means you still got to keep going. I, I, know, I know you thought I was going to give you an out because you, I was, you thought I was going to say that because your team quit, you can quit. The devil is a lie. You can't quit because you might have to be the one that's going to win for the whole family. Yes. Look around your house today and say, I'm going to take this one on for the team. You, yes. you, you got to win for your home family. If your family don't see the value in it, that's okay. You, if God showed it to you, you got to keep going until you get there. Because what people cannot see, it's not because, listen, you're so smart. It's because God has opened your eyes to show you something. Yes. And mm -hmm. he is going to make you the captain of this crisis. All because you can see through what anxiety is trying to show you different. So as I close, I'll tell you this. The Lord responds with his story mm. with you to push you through what was assumed to be your destruction. Mm. And church, that's exactly what it was. That's how they were able to go back to work because they began to recall the stories of God. Mm -hmm. This is what God did for our ancestors. This is what God did for my father. And what did, and what did the text say? Because God did it for my father, I'm going to praise him. Yes, Lord. Because mm -hmm. I just see him doing the same thing for me. Mm -hmm. And then after he does it for me, I'm going to praise him again. Mm -hmm. Because dad is God was right. This is where right. we understand the tradition that we, we hear in the song. As a matter of fact, it said, my mama prayed for me. Yes. Uh, uh, Put, had me on her mind, took the time 
to pray for me. And now, now that mama prayed for me, now I learned how to pray for myself. Yes. And, and since I learned how to pray for myself, now I'm praying to the same God that mama prayed to. Ooh. And so since it is that prayer works because it worked for mama, now it's working for me. And that's because what God was doing in the past, he's allowing history to motivate my moment right now. Yes. And so church, yes. I want to tell you that God is using that same history. Mm -hmm. to motivate our moment for right now. So this is why black folk especially can't quit. Right. Because while it was, we thought that it was just Africans that made it in Middle Passage. But no, guess what else? It was Haitians as well. Mm -hmm. And, and we, have, we have to be careful how we understand the history of black folk coming from all other places. And because they were black, we had a shared experience. Wow. And my enlightenment helps me to understand that my shared experience is because I had people from other places because God was working in all directions wow. to help us to get to a future that we haven't even realized yet. But if we keep on trying, we will get to some places that the devil said we could get to, but God said it belongs to us. Yeah. I need to say goodbye to you and tell you that where you are right now is not the end of you. All you got to do is keep going because God is building his story through you. Yes, Lord. You're making history every day. This is why I can't just celebrate in February. I'm celebrating every month because black history is every day for me. Yeah, It's every hour. It's every minute because every time, every time opportunity comes, I'm making history. Look at somebody in your house and say we're making history listen making uh, history. We, we might be the first millionaires in our family but that's okay we're we, we gonna set the standard and then guess what else we're gonna open the door and bring others with us well. mm -hmm. yeah. I, I could you know I could, I could i could go so many different ways with this but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna pause mother and just kind of exhale for a minute because I, I i dropped so much at one time yeah that, that i'm telling you that the history of God fighting for us Ooh. is so, it is so important. Ooh. It is key, church. Ooh. The history of God fighting for us Ooh. is because God is fighting for something that I might not even have the intelligence to fight for. Oh, my God. You, you understand what I'm saying? When God fights for a church, that the members don't even understand what they have. Mm -hmm. I ain't just talking about grace. I'm talking about the body of Christ. God is fighting for something that we don't even realize how valuable it is. Well, can, I, can I share with you, church, that the black church has been there and has been the bedrock of black success? Yes. Right. That while it was that, that, that many people get off thinking that, you know, Pastor Williams is really on this entrepreneur tip, but no, I'm really on the success tip. Mm -hmm. I'm on the success tip. You're going to be successful wherever it is that God has destined for you to be successful. Well, but guess where your success is going to start? I believe it's going to start in the church. Mm -hmm. Because listen, because if you are successful and you're not in community, mm -hmm. then how will others receive the testimony of your success. Well, you, you understand what I'm saying? And when you get down, guess what? You're going to need community because you're going to get out there and you're going to get to a certain point that when you thought you didn't need nobody, you're going to realize you do need a community behind you to help support you because you're part of something bigger. So church, as we are trying our best to improve as a people, realize I need to be strong for my team. Yeah, yeah. But I also need my team members to be strong. So I got to yeah. put my team members in position to be strong. Guess what? If, if, if I married her, my wife is on my team. Oh, oh, God. If I need to wave the flag now. I'm about to get hot. Uh, if, if I married him, then my husband is on my team. And we got to watch this. We got to fight together yes. to get to the place that God destined for us. Mm. Well, preacher, I got some things fighting me. I promise you those things were fighting you before you got married. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so you got to realize that sometimes God will send you the help, but you got to know how to use the tool in your hand. Yeah. My you, God. you can't hammer with your sword. You, you understand? You got to use that sword to, to, to cut if you need to. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you, to, to, to jug and turn it. Yeah, I'm from North Memphis. You understand? We ain't leave. We ain't just get, we ain't cut you. We cut you and turned it a little bit. Make sure yeah, that wound stayed open. You understand what I'm saying? So listen, church, you got to know how to use the tools you have. And so since it is that we have tools, 
we might as well use those tools for the task at hand rather than allowing the task at hand to get the best of us. I'm going to take a break right now and let my minister of music come in right now. And uh, cause he was supposed to come in with hoop triggers right when I was really warming up in that text, but he, he missed his cue. So I'm gonna give him a chance now. I'm gonna redeem him. Let him come back. Uh, so listen, we're gonna we're gonna uh, our Trevor's gonna come with the selection for the day, and after he is finished, we'll come back with our closing remarks and prayer. This is what I like to do during this time. Of course, it is when our minister of music, of course, is playing this selection. I'd like for you to get your prayer requests together. We're gonna use this moment of time because music has always been a, a prior to the minister of music coming. I'm just going to say uh, just an extension of what you said, that, that uh, the, the history of God, the next generation, when Joshua was going over, he said to be strong and courageous, do not be mm -hmm. afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Mm -hmm. And that's the history of God that we can take in our lives on the rest of this day, tomorrow, and every day hereafter. Absolutely. Absolutely. The history, we're going to take God, we're going to take God with us. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to get so great that I'm going to forget that I need, I need the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh boy. Um, we, we win, we win, we win. We, we, um, as we, as we, um, we're going through the, the prayer request there. I saw a couple things that I shall not mention on this, uh, <laughs> Um, for one, I'll, I'll pray that this, this book is published and, um, and the others to follow and just the Arthur experience and uh, the health and finance of family. Uh, but, you know, I, it, there's, there's the other part there. Mm. <laughs> keep going, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Mother said that she, did she know her children need a father. She's praying that the Lord sends her a mate. <laughs> we're gonna pray mother we're gonna pray for you i'm gonna pray I'm, that's that's the answer i'm gonna pray for you i'm gonna pray for you so um just in case if there are if there are others of you that have uh, a a prayer request uh definitely we want to put that out there um we definitely want to lift up uh, uh sister aisha um and her family she's had they've had multiple deaths church in, in a short period of time yeah, she she lost a, an uncle, I want to say this weekend, and then she learned her grandmother passed away, either an uncle or an aunt this weekend, but then her grandmother passed, passed away even before that funeral. So there's like, you know, multiple, multiple things happening in that family. And so I'm going to just ask you to lift her up. And, uh, you know, this is her birthday weekend. And, you know, Ooh. while it, while she's trying to enjoy that moment, you know, then she has uh, that to contend with. Uh, and so uh, I, I do want to shout out uh, all of the birthdays that occurred this week. Um, looks as if that uh, there was a tea party that I that I was not invited to. I'll be sure to send Beans a memo um, before we get back into church and let her know that she's, we're going to get some pink slips in the church, mother. I need, I need a few more. Uh, to send to little beans for for wanting always wanting to come in my office and get candy and uh, want me to pick her up and such and then she have a little party she put her outfit on and then not invite me I was supposed to be on program to pray eat a piece of cake and then leave but uh, nonetheless maybe the Lord knew my diet and said that I could not come but nonetheless uh, but really I'm really happy for people uh, that have birthdays and I want to acknowledge and thank you um, um, for those of you that not only had a birthday, but then uh, shared and expressed it and celebrated it, and we had a chance to acknowledge. Um, but also, you know, for those of you that have prayer requests, I want here's what I want to say to you: when we when we are talking about um, fighting for the thing that God has put in in front of you, this is prayer is one weapon that you can use to fight. Man. Okay, you can you can keep praying, and and I, and my thing is. Pray about it and write it down. Write it down the day you prayed to say, okay, God, well, you know, I want, I want this, I want this. And, and, and write it down, record it. Because listen, the activity of God is what you need to, to help keep you encouraged. When people say, well, you know, how you know God is working? Because I remember 
on in February uh, uh, that I prayed for this and God made it happen. Uh, I prayed that God would do it before Friday. It happened on Thursday. Um, you know, I prayed that the Lord would make make a way, and He made a way. And so, you should have your own history of the activity of God in your life. And and I'm inviting you all to join together. But also, we have to pray intently. I ask people to put it in a chat box for us to pray together. Oh. I'm going to pray corporately for the congregation, but I, I ask you uh, to take a look at some of the things that have been mentioned. We, we got names out there where folk been diagnosed with cancer. We got other people that have been struggling uh, with life in, in general. You have parents uh, interceding for their children. You have other people asking God to give them the strength and the power to overcome addiction. So, so listen, this is not something for us to get on the phone and get in people's business and, 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 and uh, talk about them in a negative fashion, but it is for us to join together and believe God with them, that God will give you the power to overcome what it is that's trying to overcome you. So as we close in prayer today, I ask you to continue, lift up these families and those that we've seen in the chat box. And of course, keep your church in prayer, keep, keep, uh, keep your leadership in prayer as we try our best to lead you in seasons like these. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time together. We bless you, God, for this word today. We thank you, Father, that you have taught us about fatigue. Lord, we thank you that fatigue is something that we all experience in, uh, as being human, that, that even Jesus was tired at one time. And God, we thank you that uh, because of tiredness, it does not tailor my future, but it can affect my future. So Lord, I thank you that, that you have given us remedy for tiredness. You have told us, you have taught us today, God, that if we can just get organized, we won't be that tired. Oh God, help us to get some things together. God, I, I can't... I I can't stay away from that enough, but Lord, help us to get some things together, not getting it together, but help us to get it together. Father, we pray that we could be examples for our children to look to you in times of need because that's what we do. So Father, I pray that we be a living epistle to our kids and to those that's close to us, to those God that we're ministering to. Help us God, give us a word to share with them. And Father, give us the confidence to be able to recite the word according to what is written. And even God, if we can't recite it by memory, we can still read it and that's just as good. Thank you God for choosing us to be vessels in times like these that we might be able to share even with with the downtrodden to give them a word of uplift to pull them out of the dirt and help them get into a place of sanity lord we also intercede and ask yes, god that yes. you would just be there for these folk god yes. that are striving yes. for better in their life mm. father i thank you right now mm. that that you have given us word that we don't have to be comfortable and content mm. in everything that we find ourselves in god the aggravation for better has been something you've stirred up in this group of people well. and now, Lord, since you stirred it up, I yes, pray, Lord. God, that you allow us the passion to pursue mm. what is possible. Yes. So, God, we thank you right now be, that we rely on the power that raised Jesus from the dead mm. to give us passion for the possible. Yes, yes, I yes. pray, God, that you touch in the yes. name of Jesus. No matter where we are, whether it's sick out of surgery, mm. whether it's just now coming out of prison, mm. we have a God that gave us passion for the possible. Yes, and yes, since, yes, God, you yes. made it possible, we're going to do our very very best to make it happen. Yes. Father, we pray for those that are weak and in our circle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you didn't make us aware of that weakness for us to have something to gloat about and feel better about as it relates to us looking down on them. Mm -hmm. But God, you gave us awareness so we yes, can lift Lord. them up. Yes, so Father, we lift up those that are down, that are in our circle, those we know about God that are struggling and dealing with problems we don't have. Mm -hmm. And God, some of the problems they have are shared. Yes, we have the same problem. So Father, we lift them up. Yes, and while Lord. we're doing so, God, yes, we're giving you the glory yes, because Lord. somebody had to lift us up to yes, get us out of the yes, mud. Yes. And God, we're lifting up our brothers and yes, our sisters yes. to pull them out of places, God, that you pulled us out of as well. And for that, Father, we say thank, thank you. you. Thank as you. we close this prayer today, God, I ask you to give the congregation a sense of fighting, yes, God. not to fight one another, but to fight what's fighting us. Oh, God, give us the strength, God, to fight that thing that's trying to stop us from getting to this place called success. And now, Lord, as we are turning the page and looking forward unto the things that the future lies ahead, I thank you, God, that eyes haven't seen.
I thank you, God, that ears haven't heard because I don't want anybody to put a capacity on what you have given before it even comes. God, I want to go to it and be open that whatever you do, God, is going to be better than what it is, that, that God, that what's to come will be better than what's been. And now, Lord, as we're looking unto that future, we thank you that what is to come is better than what's been. Yes, from a place of rubble, but oh, when we get through with it, God, it's going to be Ooh. better than we've ever seen before. And yeah, for that, God, yeah. we celebrate right now. Yeah. We give you glory right now. Yeah. God, we give you praise yeah. right now because where I'm going is better than I've ever been. Oh, God, I'm giving you glory because who I'm going to be is better than I've ever been. Oh, I give you thanks that my feelings will be better, God, that I'm sick now, but I'm going to be healed because of the, oh, God, because because of what you're getting ready to do. Where I'm headed is better. And God, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Father, we pray now for those, God, who even took the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And those that are taking the vaccine and, and the side effects, God, that they don't even describe. But Father, we give you the glory right now that nothing that we do will harm the future that you have put in place. Thank you, Lord, that you have made provisions. But God, we don't want those provisions to make us sick but make us better. We are prepared for the future and we thank you, God, for what you've made available now. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the Lord. God bless you now. Have a great day. Have a great week. I love you so much. Don't you give up on God because God will not give up on you. The Lord has made life available for you. Be blessed is my prayer.